Hey guys, here's our story back in here again for another video. This time we're back with AOR once again. Thank you for the videos I have uploaded. But uh, we're back with yeah, our season 14 and round 5 here at Spain. After the absolute calamity that was Russia, we're back in Spain to hopefully make amends for what was that absolute disaster. Qualifying on pole and then ending up P9 after well, just two minutes in the race. Uh, so it's really responsive and never been like that before. But I've done a lot of practice for uh, the Spain. It's usually a good track for me in, in the past in the racing, so I was actually looking forward to this until I realised that I've been doing 1 minute 17 is quite breeze around this track and I was not even doing 79s, so I was suicidal pretty much. But uh, yeah, um, qualifying, here we are, so going into turn 1 you need to kind of mount that curb. Just for the start, I was, in the first run I, I was doing 18 ones. I could, I could do an 18 one in the first stint and uh, yeah, that's just not a great corner. Well, this first lap was just a mess anyway, as you can see, top it off, let's get a corner cut for the bounce. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, in the first stint I was, I, I was able to do 18 ones in qualifying, and then I would probably be up by like 3 tenths in, the, in, my, in my second stint, and then lose it all in just that final chicane. So it's always brilliant, OMG it's Joe goes to the top of the field for the moment, because he was the first one to set a lap time. But uh, this is actually my fastest lap that I do now, because uh, my second run didn't go to plan at all. Breaking between the 150 metre board, the 100 meter board and 50 meter board, you need to take up some of the green uh, curb on the apex. Pretty much go flat out between uh, two to three. Breaking where the bridge starts at the top of the screen, turn in fifth gear. Could go down to fourth for extra turn in, straighten up the steering as much as possible to, so you can plant the so you can plant the throttle. Fourth gear round turn five, you can go into third to slow the car down. Into sixth gear, down to fourth, take as much curb as possible so you're, you're using less of track. Sith gear turn in with the black boxes, try not to get a corner cut. As I need to sneeze there, I'm deeply sorry. Uh, it's definitely getting, getting edited out. Breaking the 100 meter board down to third, up to fourth, and take a little curb here. I would usually take some curb there, but I kind of just missed the apex a little bit. Straighten up the steering, uh, down to fourth again from fifth. Plant the power, break where that little bridge thing is, I don't know, banner. Going into third, like the most treacherous chicane you've ever seen in your life. This was like the most horrific narrated comic book upon that. But uh, we did go into third at, at that point. But uh, like I said, that was my fastest lap, and obviously people would improve. And uh, we did end up in P10. And we, so we also inserted our front end into a Mercedes' bum, so it's brilliant. But Mercedes gets pole position in front of the Flying Finn and Alonso. Evo finally having some sort of luck, I guess, qualifying in 4th, but we're down in 10th uh, behind Jason and Surprise, who were 2nd and 3rd in Russia, uh, ahead of JD, Carpuffel and Eve Yarkel, who had a horrific session, but uh, yeah, for the start, we're just going to need to get a good start, do the opposite of what we did at Russia, um, I, I was quite confident, I think, I was not, I didn't have any expectations going into the first corner purely because Surprise and Jason have absolute demonic starts. And I knew that uh, even if I do get a better start than Cryo Lockdown, who was just in front of us, uh, you'll see him like just in the left there. Even if I did get a better start than him, I'm, I am quite far away from him to even jump him into turn one. And that's bearing in mind I get the godly start anyway but uh preparing for the five red lights now waiting for the timer to go out which it's going to happen in just a moment now that's the nuke bomb tick gone we have four five red lights for the spanish grand prix and it's lights out and away we go as you can see Cry actually got a pretty decent start jason and surprise getting brilliant starts as usual we got a good start as well as you see Surprise is going side by side with Cryo there, breaking a little bit early. Just so that we don't 
die into the first corner, cries off the track. He's gonna hope he's gonna stay in front of Surprise. We're looking around the outside of Surprise, it's not gonna work out. We're gonna try and look to the inside now, but we haven't carried the drive through turn three. Looking around the outside now, we're gonna break late, try and hang it right around the outside of Surprise, but it's not gonna work. He's gonna just take the racing line, really. We're just in front of Tyrrell Limitless still. Going to the outside, Surprise makes contact with Cryo. Cryo nearly runs into our car there, trying to catch himself. And now we're on the outside of Surprise going into turn say this is turn seven. Right is outside, he's pushing us wide, but we are gonna make the move. We're still going side by side into turn nine. We've got the inside, he's gonna have to yield, which he does so by just going wide. And we just about hang on to P9, but Surprise is still having a bit of a ding-dong with the two uh, Torossos with Stu and Tyrrell Limitless. As Limitless now goes into P10. Into P so uh, not a great start there for Surprise. This initial start was really good and then it's all gone wrong trying to overtake cryo lockdown bit of a corner cut there uh I, i'm not gonna lie for, for whatever reason the car did feel completely different in the race um in, in comparison to what i was doing in practice um it is still currently leading the way i'm sure ahead of the flying fin i have no idea since i didn't watch the stream back so i don't really know what's going on anyway horing out the slipstream of cryo lockdown not gaining absolutely anything as Tyrolimus is now all over the back of us, we're going to need to make a move on Cryo Lockdown ASAP because I know that I've got better race pace than Cryo and I really just don't want to get overtaken by JD straight away. So uh, going, coming into turn four, we're going to go down into fourth, trying to get the turn in. We're going to try and stay as tight as possible, to maybe use up less track than Cryo. We're going to look to his inside, but he's defending them for the track. He kind of just turns into us there, but I'm not really going to have a fuss over that one. Tyrolimus is now on our inside, he's probably going to break late to try and get it up our inside. We're going to break even later and just turn into the corner. A bit like what we were doing in Russia to surprise on the first lap. Just turn in and hopefully uh, they realise that they're not going to make the move. But uh, we had a pretty terrible run out of them. JD's now on the outside. We're going to try and squeeze him out. We're going to give him enough space though. And he, we've made contact. We've nearly spun into JD. Oh, now Stu's on our inside and oh my goodness me. Right. I, whatever the fuck just happened there. Stu's just made up two places there. Two of them is letting us back past, I think. Uh, I'll say I think. I'm pretty sure that was his intention. Um, okay, now just to go over what just happened there. Um, uh, me and JD basically just had like a side pod of death, pretty much. Shit, where his car's... Well, my car got glued to his. And I was getting dragged uh, to the left. No, to the right, sorry. And basically... If JD didn't pull out of that, we I, I don't know if I saved it or not, or it was something that JD, that JD did there. But uh, uh, yeah, credit to JD for actually giving me the place back. Um, I, I think that was more just the game being a bit crap. Um, but uh, hey, cheers for that anyway. But uh, Stu, the man that managed to capitalise on all of that, is uh, now in front of us. And just look at this. We've got Slipstream, got DRS, and we were basically gaining nothing into turn one. It's just made the move just impossible to make there. Uh, turns out, oh, I, it was, wasn't really to my knowledge, but uh, there is a Slipstream glitch on this game, which is, um, you know, Codemasters, you just... It is just awful at this rate. Uh, breaking a bit too early for turn four, uh, turn five actually. And now Tyrell is now on our inside. We know he's a faster car. We're going to just sit behind him now. We're going to give him a place. And uh, we kind of, I think, kind of got to the grass there. But uh, yeah, I was just going to use JD as a tow. Pretty much going back to my old season 12 China tactic of, like, well, throw back to that race. Where I just tried to stay behind uh, the HCR Cupid, Dizzy Cupid, Bambly, TSR Lee, whatever the fuck you want to call him. Um, and just use him as a toe to, when he overtakes a car, try and capitalise on that on that straight away. But, uh, as you see, the, we kind of dropped off a little bit, we made a few mistakes. Um, my consistency in my driving wasn't brilliant at this rate, at this point in the race. But, uh, Tyrell Limits is going to go for a move, and considering they're both teammates, uh, Stu's going to make that a little bit easy for him, in comparison to what he would probably do for me. JD gets a little bit out of shape though and he holds up Stu, so now we're on the back of them and as you can see JD's kind of holding us up here. But uh, yeah, expect JD just to pull away now, so we kind of need to make a move ASAP. We're not going to overall lunge into here because that would just be satanic. 
Uh, need a good run out of there, which we just don't get. At this point, I didn't even realise it was the slipstream glitch, or whatever the fuck it was. I just thought I was running my arrows just too high, and I was running 4.8, so I don't know if he was maybe running like 3.7 or fucking 1.4, one, one I know. But uh, we're on the back of Stu now, as you can see, DRS slipstream, I think he's got DRS as well, but he hasn't got enough of a slipstream on JD, but we just were not gaining on that straight. Maybe that's a little bit more understandable since he would think have slipstream, but uh, I don't really know with this game anymore. As you can see, JD has got built a little bit of a gap, so I'm just hoping that Stu has, uh, hasn't got DRS, which has he got? No, he hasn't, so he's going to be defending this inside, which he is. We're going to look to the outside now, breaking the 100-meter board. Just try and turn in the cars, just sliding, though. And, yeah, there was just there's not enough space for us to hang around the outside at all. We, we would just be looking for a crash. Uh, going a bit too wide here, so we're going to lose a bit of time. Stu is literally... I'm pretty sure he is the hardest person to overtake on, yeah, probably in AOR and possibly on this game. He, I think, plus the slipstream glitch, it was impossible. As you can see, he gets a bit of a messy exit out of the last corner. And we're not gaining. We're only gaining with, as you can see, we tried to swap to the inside to maybe let him give us some room up, up on the inside, but uh, he just called his line, which is completely fair. But, uh, yeah. Still struggling to make a move, having a look at turn three, but uh, yeah, that just wasn't going to work. Like I said, I think plus the slipstream glitch, it, it did make the overtake just a lot harder to even attempt. So um, that was that probably put a dent in, well, our, our charge, I guess. But uh, we're on the back of Cryo Lockdown now, once again, as uh, Tyrell Lumis has got past him. As you can see, JD is in that, I think he's actually ahead of... That might be OMG, it's Joe just in front there. I'm not 100% sure on that. Stu's going to keep going for another lap as Tyrell Lumis is pitting. Uh, we're going to take it a little bit easy into, into the pit lane. We usually break a lot later, but uh, try not to run into the back of um, of uh, Cry Lockdown. That's still Martin, I think, just in front of us, who's actually made his pit stop. There's Joe and there's Martin. So Martin's actually a pit stop in front of us all, pretty much already. Uh, he's quite... No, he's not a pit stop in front of us. It's just the wrong wording there. He is quite the distance in front of us, I should just say. Uh, and a lot Evo, who... Must have been in that little pack, I guess. Made an early pit stop, I'm guessing. Um, we, yeah, we got held up in the pits. Evo's jump. Well, he was going to jump us anyway. I'm pretty sure he's jumped Cryo and uh, he's actually battling uh, OMG and Joe. But uh, I could have sworn that Cryo got in front of Joe on my screen, but uh, it's not. Um, that's Stu, who's now, we had to go for an extra lap, and that's Evo currently going for a move on Joe. He runs it a bit hot, though, at turn one. He's having to defend through turn two and three. He's going to be quite slow. So Joe's probably going to have a look at turn four. You think he's side by side with him? He is. Is he going to make the move? I think he is. They're going side by side, and me and Cryo are just sitting back with, with a popcorn out, open for a crash. We're looking at the outside of Cryo as he's putting his car right in the middle of the track. Uh, and Evo, I think he still hasn't made the move on Joe, so this is actually quite a good racing between those two. As me and Cryo are just being held up. Uh, Evo now makes the move on Joe, which slows up Cryo. And, well, I nearly went into the back of Cryo there. We actually made a little bit of contact on my screen. Cryo gets a sh sloppy exit out of there. So now Warren is outside, once again breaking as late as we can. Hopefully just turn in, we, the car grips, we're getting squeezed out wide. We've, he's given us the space though. We hang it round his outside to have the inside for the next corner. We've lost the rear end, though. Can we put the power down to try and make the move? Yes, we can. In front of Cryo Lockdown now on lap 13 of 30, what, 33, actually. Not 31, what I'm saying. But uh, now into P10 now. We're in front of Cryo and Stu. So now we just got to hope that we're going to catch uh, Joe now. But uh, cause I'm defending the position now since I've was just assuming that his air was just a lot lower than mine, which I'm pretty sure it was actually. Just about defending from Cryo through turn 1 and 2, and we do defend that successfully. And now it's all about just the grind now to try and catch um, it's Joe and Evo. We're sort of hoping that Joe would keep up with Evo, and hopefully I'll keep up with them as we see them losing the rear end through turn 4. But, um, yeah. Just hoping that
uh, Joe will keep up, but uh, as we can see, lap 24, a, couple, a good few laps later, about 10 laps later, uh, not really the case. But uh, for us, it was just a grind to try and catch up to Joe. I was making a lot of mistakes, but eventually I got my head down and really knew what I, what I needed to do at this rate. I needed to keep up with Joe. I needed the, I needed the points, really, because uh, in, in reason, well, Bahrain, I, I didn't finish on the points. Um, Russia was just a mess when I could have probably come away with a podium. Race win if you're lucky, but I uh, got over that one. And uh, we need points. That, that was the big thing here. We need some good points. Piet would give us four points. Uh, we are only on 12 points at the moment. I'm, I'm not keeping points. But uh, Joe's genuinely a championship contender in our fight in the midfield. Um, I think he's had a lot of bad luck because he runs wide at turn five. Uh, Joe, I think he's had a lot of bad luck um, in terms of qualifying and just overall crashes, mistakes in the race. So he is actually having a very good race. I think he qualified a lot further up. So uh, to be battling with us is probably not what he wanted. But uh, we're all over the back of Joe now. We, I think our pace was actually stronger than Joe's. So uh, I needed to, to somehow make the move because it, it was going to be impossible. As you can see, we're in the slipstream. And it's just not really doing anything. We're only gaining time, I think, thanks to just the DRS making our car quick in a straight line. But we managed to make Joe stay defensive going into turn one, giving him a slow line. We're going to look at the inside of turn three. He's going to keep turning in. A little bit of a collision there. We just about saved the car. Neither of us spin out. We just lose a bit of time. Not going to lie, I shit bricks when that happened. Um, was sort of hoping Joe would force... Uh, he, he, he would move a little bit out of the way but uh, you know he didn't so fair play to him uh, I'm not gonna again I'm not gonna get to a, a, a fuss over it it's hard but fair racing rubbing's racing but uh, yeah we now we just need to continue the grind because that, that's really our first opportunity to try and make a move so uh, as you can see just just another example of the slipstream just not doing anything we're just getting I, I don't know what aero Joe was running uh, I don't, and yeah, so speaking of uh, aero and everything else, we get a penalty. Um, it was deserved, I'm not going to lie. Um, I was doing quite well in practice about the corner cutting, but uh, yeah, clearly in the actual session, the mistakes are made, the nerves are, it, are kicking in, and uh, we make a pretty silly mistake there. Just break a little bit early, turn in too early. And uh, we get a penalty, so that could be curtains on this place, but just for pride, I want to go for this P8. Maybe Joe has a penalty, maybe we can still come away with, P with P8 if uh, we don't lose too much time to Stu. Um, I wasn't actually aware of how far behind Stu was. Um, I just wasn't paying attention. I was so focused on trying to make a move on Joe that I just paid no attention to um, to where Stu and Cryo actually were. As you can see, skipping on later into the race, we're actually in front of Joe now. I got past him at turn one and two, but uh, I d it just didn't capture it, so apologies for that. But uh, now that we're in front, we kind of need to just build the gap, stay consistent, and hopefully we'll pull away and get away with that. Uh, no, mm, of course not. Uh, we make a mistake on the exit of the, sh of the chicane. I was struggling with traction there for a while, and uh, it finally bite back with Joe now having DRS pulling away on the straight and now we've got three laps to try and make another move on Joe and make it stick so lap 31 or 33 Joe is probably about half a second in front of us now our pace was better 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 but um yeah as you can see we, we lost we've been losing time to Stu which I just wasn't paying attention to but uh we're losing a lot of time, plus our penalty. Points is looking a bit slim now. So we kind of just need to get our head down, try and recatch Joe, get past him, and just go as fast as we can for the last two laps, if we can get past him. But uh, it's all about trying to catch him now. We've got to stay consistent, stay as quick as possible. But we've also got to save some fuel as the Matisse is the fastest fast lap of the race. Fuck knows how, but uh, just wheel users, I guess. 
It's going to be on layer through lap 31 onto lap 32 now, as you can see. I'm still trying to go for the slipstream, thinking it works, but it just doesn't. Um, although my engine was overheating in his dirty air, although I won't get slipstream for it, so that's lovely. Joe gets a little bit out of shape through turn 1 and 2, but he holds the line. We're trying to get a quicker run through turn 3, it's not really gaining there. We, could, we need to make up something as Car Powerful, the probably one of the drivers with the worst internet connections in the league, along with probably Langman, uh, going slowly in front because uh, he's uh, actually disconnected or left the session. But now we are right on the back of Joe. We're going to try and... Yep, so any chance that we have of getting a penalty removed is out the window now. So uh, that's... Uh, it, it's basically just a fight for pride at this point if Joe doesn't have a penalty. So uh, are we going to make a move to here? No, we're not. So turn 10 and... Uh, it, well, this last, chiquette, this last sector is basically single file. But uh, at this point... Getting a little bit of throwbacks to Sierra Season 3 when I made a desperate lunge on Surprise Mare into the final chicane. So, getting a bit desperate, we go for the move in the final chicane and we actually make the move. So, I was pretty chuffed with that. I was actually really hyped. I didn't ex I, I needed to make a move that Joe wouldn't expect and he'd be caught very much off guard. The last chicane is not an overtaking place. And, well, second game running, um, plus season 0, season 3. Uh, we actually make a move there, but uh, now it's all about trying to go as fast as we can to try and defend this position, but Joe, carrying almighty corner speed, is all over the back of us. He's going to have a look into turn 4, but like I said before, we just got to turn in, straighten the steering, and plant the power. Going into turn 5 now, we're just going to place the car in the middle of the track, learning off what Quarry Lockdown was doing in the, in the start of this race. Trying to get a run now into, into turn set into turn seven and eight. We actually hit the grass and on the curb. A horrific run through there. Joe's on side by side with us. Is he gonna do what Surprise failed to do? No, he's not. But he's gonna try and get a cutback. He's gonna have the DRS. We're defending the inside. We're now swapped to the outside. Breaking as late as we dare. We're gonna lock up as well. We need to drop down to first gear. And we park it in the middle of the track where he can't get past. And hopefully this could be the place cemented. But as you can see Stu and Cryo all over the back of us now. But uh, we need to defend going into here. Because I, I absolutely read that like an absolute book. And knew that Joe would go for that. But it was no use. We hang on for P8. That's going to drop to P9. To P10. And P11. Ah. Uh, so. <laughs> we did all that for nothing. Really. We fought our absolute hearts out for P8. To go to, down to P11, um, not what you want. Obviously, I'm not going to be getting P8 back since I did get another warning and they were pretty deserved penalties anyways. Uh, I forgot to mention Finn won the, another race. He's a, he's a man on the mission, as you can see in the championship. We've actually been dropped outside the top 10. We're a point behind Joe, we're in P11. And Monaco is next, so it's not going to go well for us. Anyway guys, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Like it if you did. Subscribe if you're new for more AOR Season 13 content. Season 13? Season 14 content. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Cheers.
Mountains move when worry dies The souls we serve have come alive The gold goes screaming at the shows We're letting go of all we know So many knows The path we chose and felt alone Can't buy you clothes, can't have a hope I know But I'll never look back now To make my dreams come true Play when it's so hard Sunsets in the 